hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel and this is the second video of backtracking tutorial okay and in this video we'll discuss one more problem on backtracking right now the problem statement is you will be given any number let's say the number is n then what you need to do you need to find out all the possible combinations from 1 to n whose sum is n itself right now let's take the value of n as 3 okay 3 now we need to find out the possible combinations from 1 to 3 whose sum is 3. So the first possible combination will be 1, 1, 1, right? Because 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Then the second one will be 1, 2. 1 plus 2 is also 3, right? And then at last we have 3 itself, right? So these are the possible combinations from 1 to 3 whose sum is 3, right? Now let's take the value of n as 4, okay? Let's take the value of n as 4. So let me show you the output. Uh, this is the output for 4, okay? So the first one is 1, 1, 1, 1. Then we have 1, 1, 2. Then 1, 3, 2, 2. And at last we have 4 itself. So this is what we need to print uh, in this format, okay? Now let's try to understand how we can solve this problem with the help of recursion and backtracking. So here I have created this function and we just need to pass uh, these parameters here and we need to call this function from min, right? Since we are using recursion, so in recursion there is the involvement of stack, okay? So this is the stack, function called stack which I have created here and we'll try to understand how internally uh, this function works right so uh, here uh, these are the parameters the first one is the vector uh, we are using vector for storing these elements because we need to print all these elements okay row by row so in vector we'll be storing these elements and the second one is the number itself so let's take the initial value of n as 3 okay and the third parameter is the index we'll use uh, this parameter in this for loop right and the initial value of index is 1 okay the initial value is 1 and here I have written 1 to 3 1 to 3 is nothing but it is actually the steps that is there inside this for loop so this is the first step then we have second step and at last this is the third step so 1 to 3 are the steps I have written here okay so we just need to call this function from main right but before that let me rub this all right so what we'll do we'll call this function from main and uh, we'll pass all these three parameters right so here i'm writing the value of n and index so the first one is n the initial value of n is 3 and the initial value of index is 1 right now we are inside this function so if the value of n is 0 then I will print the combination means we'll print this vector if the value of n is 0 then we just need to print this vector okay since the value of n is 3 okay since the value of n is 3 I will not execute this if condition will come inside this for loop right now the first step here is we just need to push the value of i here i is equal to index and the value of index is 1 okay means i is also 1 so we'll push i inside this vector so the value of i is 1 we'll push 1 inside this vector so the first step is executed we'll mark it here right now we just need to execute the second and third step right so the second step is the recursive step and here we are just passing these three parameters so the first one is the vector then the second one is n minus i now why we are passing n minus i here so uh, let's take okay so let's understand uh, in this way let's take the value of n as 4 okay so we need to find out all the possible combinations of number whose sum is 4 and let's say we have already used 1 we have already used 1 because we have already pushed 1 here right so the remaining number will be 3 4 minus 1 is 3 right so we need to find out the sum for 3 we need to find out the combination of numbers whose sum is 3 okay so this is the idea that we are using here so we'll pass n minus i and i okay now in the function called stack 
the second step is completed so here we just need to write the value of n which is n minus i so n minus i is 2 and i is 1 itself okay i is 1 so this is the function call stack now we are again back to this if condition so the value of n is not 0 okay will not execute this if condition and we are again back to this for loop so the first step is to push i inside this vector right the value of i is 1 because i is equal to index the index is 1 so the value of i is also 1 so we'll push 1 inside this vector first step is completed then we just need to complete second and third step second step is the recursive step okay we'll pass n minus i uh, n minus i is actually 2 minus 1 which is 1 and i okay so this is the second step for this function called stack right now we are again back to this if condition since the value of n is not 0 will not execute this we are back to this for loop and the first step here is to push the value of i since i is equal to index and the value of index is 1 okay so we'll again push 1 inside this vector right now the second step the first step is completed uh, we just need to execute the second step right so the second step is to call this recursive function and here we are passing n minus i now the value of n minus i since i is equal to index okay the value of n minus index will be 0 it will be 0 and here we just need to pass the value of i which is 1 so the second step for this function called stack is completed right we'll mark it here now we are again back to this if condition and now the value of n is 0 the value of n see the value of n is 0 okay so we'll print the combination okay we'll print whatever the element which is there inside the vector we'll print that so we'll print 1 1 1 here okay so the 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 this is the first combination right now we are back to this for loop and c the value of n is 0 the value of n is 0 and the value of index is 1 okay means this is not satisfying this condition see the value of index is 1 and the value of n is 0 means this condition is not satisfied so we'll not run this for loop okay we'll not run this for loop means all the three steps are completed for this function call stack now we are in the position to remove this from call stack right again we are back to this function call stack and for this function call stack two steps are already completed now we just need to execute the third step right so in the third step we are just popping out the last element from the vector okay here the last element is one so we'll pop one from here right now for this function call stack the third step is completed so we'll mark it here and since all the three steps for this function call stack okay one more thing one more thing here the value of i the value of index is 1 okay the value of index is 1 so again we are back to this for loop for this function call stack right uh, value of i becomes 2 okay because here we are incrementing the value of i so value of i becomes 2 and the value of n will remain 1 okay so it will not it is not satisfying this condition so we will not run this for loop again okay so all the three steps for this function call stack is completed we can remove this from here right now we are going back to this function call stack and for this function call stack uh, two steps are completed so we need to execute the third step so here in the third step we are just popping out the last element so we'll pop one from here okay third step is completed now we just again we are back to this for loop uh, value of i will become 2 okay because here we are incrementing the value of i value of n is 2 so we can run this for loop again okay so the first step is to push the value of i which is 2 we'll push 2 inside this vector right now we just need to call this recursive function again and here the value of n minus i will be 2 minus 2 which is 0 see the value of n is 2 and the value of i is also 2 so we'll pass 
0 here and the value of i is 2 right now we are again back to this if condition because this is the recursion and here the value of n is 0 see the value of n is 0 so we'll print uh, the vector we'll print what of the elements inside the vector here okay so we'll print 1 and 2 the sum is 3 again we just need to run this for loop because uh, see we cannot run this for loop because the value of n is 0 and the value of i which is index is 2 so we cannot run this for loop because this condition is not satisfied so we can pop this from stack okay again we are back to this function called stack so we just need to run this this step the third step okay so in the third step we are just popping out the last element from the vector so we'll pop two from here okay and we have executed this for loop twice so we can remove this function called stack from here okay now we are back to the first function called stack okay so the first step first and second step is completed now we can execute the third step so in the third step we are just popping out the element from the queue so we'll pop one from here right and again we are back to this follow because the value of n is 3 and the value of i is 2 because i plus plus is 2 right uh, again we'll push 2 inside this vector we'll push 2 here and we need to call this recursive function again here the value of n minus i will be 3 minus 2 which is 1 see the value of n is 3 and the value of i is 2 means 3 minus 2 which is 1 we'll write 1 here and the value of i is 2 okay the value of i is 2 so we are again back to this if condition which is false now you can see that the value of n is 1 and the value of index is 2 means this condition is false so we'll not run this for loop okay and we can remove this stack this function called stack from here so we are again back to uh, this function called stack and we need to execute the last step right so the last step is to just pop out on the element from the queue so we'll pop 2 from here and again we need to execute this for loop because the value of i becomes 3 and the value of n is also 3 so 3 is smaller than is equal to 3 means this condition is satisfied so we'll run this for loop again okay the value of i is 3 so we'll push 3 inside this vector right and again we'll call this recursive function and here the value of n is 3 say the value of n is 3 and the value of i is also 3 means it is 0 it is 0 okay the value of i is 3 right again we are back to this if condition and here you can see that the value of n is 0 the value of n is 0 right means we can print this vector so we'll print 3 here okay we'll print here now this is done and again we are back to this for loop and here you can see that the value of n is 0 and the value of index is 3 means this condition is not satisfied so we can remove this from stack okay and we are again back to the first function called stack right and we need to execute the last step which is to remove the last element from the queue so we'll remove 3 from here okay and all the for loops are completed for this function called stack right so we'll remove this from here as well okay and we're again back to the main function and this is the output this is the output 1 1 1 which is 3 1 plus 2 is also 3 and 3 itself okay so this is how we can find out uh, the combination sum of any given number and this is the code for it okay so this is the main function and here i'm calling this combination sum function these are the parameters and this function is similar to this one okay now let me run this let's run for number five so for five these are the possible combinations now let's run for number 10 okay for 10 so for 10 these are the combinations okay so this is how you can find out uh, the possible combination using backtracking right and here is the code so that's it for this video thank you